Welcome to another in our series of the great chapters in the Bible. Our chapter today is found in the New Testament Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 4, The Temptation of Jesus. Beginning in verse 1, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command His angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. But Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. Now when he heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light, and for those dwelling in the region and shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. From that time Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. While walking by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. And he went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons, epileptics, and paralytics, and he healed them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis, and from Jerusalem and Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. There's an old adage that goes like this, never go shopping when you're hungry. <laughs> one man tells the rather whimsical tale of going to the grocery store one day when he was hungry and is now the proud owner of aisles four and five in the snack section. <laughs> you might be able to relate to going to the store when you were hungry and to buy one or two items and coming out with four bags of groceries and wondering how in the world that it happened. In the mid-20th century, Abraham Maslow studied the human condition and came up with his hierarchy of needs. In Maslow's hierarchy, he puts at the very bottom of the pyramid the foundation, that of our physiological needs. Among them are sleep and food and water. Although some have argued its lack of true scientific basis, being formulated by observation mostly, it has nonetheless been widely accepted and generally being true. After all, it's difficult to concentrate when we are hungry, and thirsty, and sleepy. Knowing this, school systems have provided breakfast and lunch to those whose families may not have the ability or resources to feed the children at home. Studies show a marked increase in learning ability when children are not hungry. At the end of chapter 3, we find Jesus being baptized by John the Baptist. Then we're told that he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. We're told in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 12 and 13, 
the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. Luke tells us in Luke chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for forty days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. The purpose, we are told, was specifically to be tempted by the devil. For forty days, Jesus was without food. It goes without saying, even though we are told in the passages, he was hungry. And what is the first thing that the devil tempts Jesus with? Power? Pride? Nope. Turn these stones into bread. And why not? Jesus was perhaps at his weakest physically, having not eaten in 40 days. Now let's stop right there and make an observation. Let's take note of something that happened some 4,000 years before. It takes place in the garden. And we are told in Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Now the beast, now, pardon me, now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You'll not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. It may not seem obvious or apparent what the connection is here, but it's there. What happens next is a real eye-opener. Listen to what Eve perceives here. Continuing on in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some, of her, some to her husband who was with her and he ate. There are three things that Eve is tempted by. Number one, it's good for food. Number two, it was a delight to the eyes. And number three, she desired it because it would make her wise. Now, let's take another journey to one of the letters the Apostle Paul writes. He's going to quite concisely sum up something for us here. In 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 16, I'm going to read from the New King James Version. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Note what he says. There are three things in the world that tempt us. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. These are precisely what Eve was tempted by in the Garden of Eden. First, the lust of the flesh. It was good for food. Second, the lust of the eyes. It was a delight to the eyes. And third, the pride of life. It would make her wise. Now, look at what Jesus was tempted by. First, the lust of the flesh. Turn stones to bread. Second, the lust of the eyes. He's shown all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Third, the pride of life. Jump off the pinnacle of the temple. Could it really be that simple? It appears so. You may doubt this and try to find loopholes. But if you sat down and looked at what tempts you, what tempts all of us, you will come to the conclusion that what happened in the garden, what happened in the wilderness, and what John, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, reveals to us, they're all related. Now, what will tempt you and me will be no different today. Oh, the devices might be different. And after all, they didn't have computers and smartphones and such. But they all fit neatly into those three categories. But why did Jesus have to endure this temptation? Perhaps the writer of Hebrews illuminates it best for us. 
in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 17 through 18. Therefore, in all things he had to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. And again in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Now consider what Jesus said about Satan in Matthew chapter 12 verse 29. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house? Jesus defeated, yes, plundered Satan at every turn, including rising from the dead and overcoming death. There's a very important point to make here before we leave this chapter. Notice in the garden with Eve and in the wilderness with Jesus, Satan cleverly attempts to twist the words of God to his own advantage. Eve fell for it, but Jesus did not. Jesus answers the twisted words of the devil with the true word of God. For that's what he had been from eternity. John 1.1 1, 1 identifies Jesus as the word. So the next time someone tries to twist scripture to meet their own needs, you'll be wise to know what the Bible really says. Remember what the Apostle Paul told the church at Corinth in 2 Corinthians 2.11 lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So be sober and vigilant, like Peter tells us in 1 Peter 5.8, and aware of the devil's devices. So, have you been a good student of the Word of God to know these things and the devices of the devil? And Lord willing, let's meet here again tomorrow and look at another of the great chapters in the Bible.